Hey, what's going on, guys? Kyle with the car, guys. We're with Pat, actually. Um, you literally just come off, what was it, last week or yep. two weeks ago? Uh, they actually won ARG Las Vegas with uh, the Magician Pepe deck. Yep. And a lot of people want to see you on the channel to kind of get your insight on why you played certain cards and why you played the deck in general. Uh, first off, funny story. We were up here, what was it, two weeks ago, and you looked at me and asked you, I was like, what are you playing? <laughs> like, I don't know, but when I do, I'm going to win. And you, and you looked at me again, and was like, you know what, I'm winning this event. And you actually did. So that's, kinda, <laughs> that's actually hilarious. But, um, but yeah, congrats on another win. It's like, what, win six or seven? Six? Eight. Eight? Oh, I mean, I'm <laughs> off. Okay, wow. Well, um, and that's top number, like, what, 30? 29. 20, I'm... I'm Man, that's ridiculous. But yeah, let's uh, let's go into the list here. I'm gonna ask you questions, you know, along the way, just to kind of pick at your brain a little bit. Alright, sounds got. good. I played uh, three luster pendulums, um, three skull crowbat, of course. Uh, pretty small magician engine. Um, three of the ignites and two of the I don't know what the, I don't know what the names are. <laughs> two of the level four and then yeah. two of the really really bad one. Um, I don't know. Like you just don't want to draw these and of course um, this is really good though. Yeah, this card's broken. Um, he's amazing, but I don't know. These cards suck, but you gotta play them. Yeah. And then for the clowns. One trick clown. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm back and forth with this card. I don't really like it very much, but like, I like being able to overlay with mm -hmm. blush fire and it, and yeah. then it makes your exceed like kind of not wasted because like if you overlay with pendulum, it's not very good. But like overlaying with trick clown um, and blush fire lets you get back to blush fire, mm -hmm. which like that's pretty good. Um, but I'm back and forth on him. He's kind of a brick. <laughs> yeah. Um, one mirror conductor. Why only um, one of this? Well, I know a lot of people had questions about this. Um, I mean, just the magicians are usually your scales anyway, so like, um, you want to be able to search it off damage juggler for the option, but like, it's it's definitely a brick, so you don't want to draw it, and um, I don't know, like, once you use one, that's it, really, you don't okay. need the second, I guess. Um, hat trigger, I actually hate this card, but um, the only reason I played it is because of the Paul Amaru. Um, I... I don't know. It, it's good against back row decks because like they can like flip time space or whatever. Um, on if you all you do is like pendulum summon and they flip time space. But if you have like hat trigger, then you can like summon the hat trigger, make a dime dire pop it, and then pendulum summon. So like he's really good against back row decks, but like, like in the mirror match, he's really repetitive. So his effect's not very good. Um, but like he makes beast with the Palmar. Okay. Um, um three flush fire. Of course, why not? Yeah, this card's broken. Um, and three damage juggler. Uh, one garnet. Um, Why only one? A lot of people had questions about this. Uh, I was actually very opposed to one garnet for like a long time. Um, but Justin kept expl like Justin explained it where like you don't need to draw, you don't need to resolve two brilliant really fusion to win the game. Yeah. Um, and then the chances of opening like garnet and brilliant fusion together, even with only one garnet, is only like four percent. So like that means ninety six percent of the time that's not gonna happen. Which like yeah, you'll probably lose those four percent, but like it's just kind of worth it because then you'll like draw a garnet that much less because you only play one instead of playing two. Okay. Um, then Paul Maru. Uh, this was a sleeper for the entire weekend. Yeah. How many, how many times do you actually end up doing this and actually just blowing out your opponent because of it? Almost every first turn. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, this card's insane. Like, search will, uh, my friend in Italy told me about it like the morning of. And like, we had seen it before, but like, we kind of dismissed it because it's a level one, so you can't like, pendulum summon it. Yeah. Um, but he he recommended it to me, and then I sat there and tested it for a little bit, and then you could definitely see that like it was very consistent yeah. in doing what you wanted to do. So ended up just playing it, having not actually tested yeah. it. Um, and then Mask Chameleon is the last monster. Of course, why not? Two two imp targets is pretty good. Right. <laughs> um, three Brilliant Fusion. Of course, uh, this is the best card in the game. <laughs> I agree. Uh, wavering eyes. This card actually sucks. Um, Explain why why you don't like it as much right now. Um, I mean, it, it's very good in the mirrors, but like against um, other decks, it's just like it's a brick. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't really do what you want it to do against other decks because like they're playing like back row and I don't know. It doesn't really get you ahead. It doesn't. Uh, 
I don't know. I just want better cards than that in other matchups. Okay. Um, but yeah, in, in, in the mirror, it's kind of weird too. Like, it's obviously very good in the mirror, but like if you set it, then a lot of times they can like just diamond dire it. And mm -hmm. so it makes it kind of awkward where your hand has to already be good for it to be good a lot of the mm -hmm. time, since it's just going to be a brick yeah. for like a turn or two. Um, three pendulum call. The card's um, broken. Yeah, this card's really good. Um, foolish. Three Institution. Um, I definitely think that, uh, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I definitely think that uh, this card's a three of, like, I don't think uh, one or two is right. Um, it's kind of like Soul Charge from back in Shadal. Yeah, I mean, like, it just extends your play, like, um, it just, in the mirror match, it lets you be able to go uh, ladies on top of the um, natural beast a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And then in other matchups, it lets you just like diamond eye back row, sell uh, back row, like stuff like that. Okay, okay. Stell monsters. Um, three up start. Uh, and those are all for the main deck. Okay. And the extra deck is uh, just one Ignister. Mm -hmm. um, Did you not think more than one was necessary? Uh, the second one was probably, it was probably like the 16th or 17th card, like, I don't know, it was close, we wanted it, but like, um, kind of the focus was more on going, um, just beast, really, yeah. so, okay. didn't feel like it was that necessary. Um, Omega, um, Beast, Emerald, um, this card sucks, never made it. Oh, but this was another point for playing one Garnet, was that if you did like draw into one or use one and then later drew into a second Brilliant Fusion, you might have the option of being able to Emerald it back. I don't know. It never came up. This card kind of sucks, but <laughs> uh, Diamond Dyer, Ladies, Diamond. Yeah, the whole package there, yeah. Sotelo thing, Castell. Um, Dweller. Uh, How'd you like this card this way? Uh, I actually thought it was like really unnecessary, except for one situation where, like, in the mirror, you would go make um, ladies and beast first turn, mm -hmm. or you just make. Yeah, I think just when you make beast first turn without ladies, um, and then like the next turn, um, you try and attack them for game, mm -hmm. and they have damage other, so they live a turn, um, and. And they can get the hat tricker, and like you can make a rank four there. Um, and I mean, Dweller just stops the uh, damage struggle from, from letting them get hat tricker there. Yeah, okay. So, like, that's pretty much the only time I wanted it. Um, okay. you know, obviously, I play like Burning Abyss or anything, but uh, Trapeze, King of the Fair Limps, to Norden, and a Seraph Knight. And the Seraph Knight. Um, I think you had a pretty janky side deck actually. What's up? I know you had a, pre a couple of cards in the side oh, deck. Oh, yeah, yeah, my side deck is great. <laughs> and I'm being totally sarcastic. Um, two Denkos. Uh, I mean, I played like 10 mirror matches and like two Cosmos, so like I never used it, but like it's good against back row decks. I just didn't <laughs> play against back row decks. Um, pretty much same for this card. Um, now, what would you, a lot of people ask me, you know, what would you actually side this in against? I know you told me point blank that you didn't really side it in that much. Uh, well, I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't side it in for the mirror, I would side it again. Uh, it's really good against, like, any Floodgate deck because, uh -huh. like, um, you don't want to, let's say they have, like, Thunder King or they have, like, uh, any spell fragrance. I can draw, like, MST and out the any spell fragrance or I can draw, like, you know, book or whatever out the Thunder King. Like, usually, um, one card can out all different kinds of floodgates and like mm -hmm. side blocker can so like I don't know I think I think it's good against decks that have uh, a bunch of different floodgates okay um, the second um, brick <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know I probably went inside this again like background decks are kind of not very good <laughs> and it, it was just kind of unnecessary and he's a brick um, and three magical spring. Uh, okay, why did broken. you hop on the train here? Right, this card's broken. Um, I agree. Uh, hop on the train. We've had this card for <laughs> a long time. Crazy. Um, but now, nah, uh, we we were gonna. Uh, Justin had was like, he convinced us to main it, and like, 
we totally were with it actually um, because it's so good against the ignite or against the ignite <laughs> against the uh, wisdom eye yeah um because it's like you just play it when they go double wisdom eye or whatever and then like they can't destroy their uh, wisdom eye and their scales are like stuck yeah. and then it's until the end of their next turn so it floodgates them for that turn and it floodgates them for the next turn too okay um but like uh and, and like i said uh, we were going to main it um, and that, and that was Justin's idea, but then um, when we came up, uh, when um, Andrea told me about Paul Mario, mm -hmm. then we decided to cut the Magical Springs from the main deck and just side him into it. Okay. Uh, three MST. I hope these ratios are right. It's like a week later, <laughs> and I, I put these back together. Um, I think this was the right ratio, though. Three MST, two Storm. Mm -hmm. um, and this card's broken. Um, in the finals, I like. Um, when I, like brilliant, he went Kaiser Coliseum set two, and I like brilliant fusion, and then. Uh, so you're playing Cosmo? Fire. Huh? Did you play against Cosmo in the final? Yeah. See, nobody knows because it wasn't streamed. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, Cosmos, yeah. you ended up. Playing yeah, I played, against, I played against Cosmo in the final. Um, and I opened like brilliant fusion when he went uh, Kaiser Coliseum set two, uh -huh. um, and he had a monster on the field, and then uh, search for plush fire and play plush fire, activate the uh, set a card, and then activate the storm, destroyed the set, the brilliant fusion, and the plush. <laughs> Fire to destroy the Kaiser Coliseum and both the says like game over right there. Uh, yeah, this card's very good. Um, I decided to roach for uh, for annoyed. Yeah. Um, didn't play it, but whatever. And then the second Garnet. <laughs> <laughs> Why the second Garnet? What was the whole um, purpose of that? Uh, the entire idea was like. I lo Justin had convinced me to go 3-1 on the Brilliant Fusion and Garnet, but not to the point where like I was 100% sold, so uh -huh. I kind of wanted to have like a safety net in yeah. case I felt like I messed up. Yeah. Um, and I was content with what I was signing in the mirror, I was content with what I was signing against Cosmo, like had back row decks good mm -hmm. to go, so like I wasn't really wanting to side other cards, so it seemed safer to just have like a safety net and like just acknowledge that like I didn't test 3 1 as much as I should have. Um, so, like, and then I could give myself a like safety net essentially okay. to just yeah, in case I felt like I messed up midway through the tournament. <laughs> Well, I have one more question. A yep. lot of people, and when I say a lot, I'm probably about 30, 40 people have asked me, <laughs> do you go first or second? I go second. You go second? Yep. Right. Um, like, this deck, this deck is good going first, but, like, all the other decks are so bad going first yeah. that, like, you can kind of capitalize on that. Um, so where that, anytime you go second, you're just in a really, really good position, and then, like, going first, like, it's not bad. Um, and obviously, you can do broken stuff if you open like Brilliant Fusion, but like the times you don't open Brilliant Fusion, you'd really prefer to go second. Okay. Well, thank you for all the insight on the deck. I know yep. a lot of people really want to see it once again. Well, yeah. congratulations on yet, you said the eighth win, right? Yep. God almighty. We I have a book coming out. If you want to win eight rings, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I will definitely be promoting that book. That, yeah. I'm actually going to read that once you publish and everything. But uh, congrats again on the win. We'll thank definitely you, see you. It on the channel again very soon once you win another one. So. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, Pat and Pal the Car, guys. We will see you guys later. Peace.